I'm Lawrence Llewellyn Byrne, and I'm absolutely delighted to be here to celebrate William Morris's 182nd birthday. Yay, go William. In fact, I think he's looking incredibly good for his age. One of the things that's so extraordinary about William Morris, and one of the things that I think this event, the brilliance of William Morris, really celebrates, is the fact that actually he's still so approachable. His work is still so communicative. Um, and that even now, 182 years later, he's still such an incredibly recognisable brand. But a brand that comes with so much goodwill, so much uh, sense of happiness in built into it. So um, congratulations, William Morris. I am delighted to be here. Um, very, very wisely, everyone persuaded me not to jump out of a birthday cake because that could have got quite messy. <laughs> Hi, thanks very much. I feel slightly ashamed that I'm talking about something which is so much more frivolous than Mark and Rowan, but at least it's a frivolous end to the evening. <laughs> um, so I'm going to talk initially about Morris's lifetime. And Morris didn't comment on dress until the 1880s, but he did move in circles that practiced something called artistic dress. So artistic dress was a rejection of fashionable Victorian dress. Um, it was loose, it was comfortable and simple. This slide shows uh, William Morris's wife, Jane, um, painted by Rossetti, and she's wearing really typical artistic dress, which is, which is some dress that harks back to the medieval period. Um, it was very much at odds with Victorian fashion. So Morris talks about dress in the 1880s in a lecture called Some of, Some of the Lesser Arts of Life. He calls um, to women within this lecture to be free of the reign of the crinoline. And he also comments that you shouldn't allow yourself to be upholstered like armchairs and drape yourself like women. Interestingly, he adds after that, and I'm barely paraphrasing him here, if you do that, then that will really make men happy. Morris himself, though, was very uh, sort of practical in his attire. So Hem Henry James, the author Henry James, comments that Morris was very careless and unfinished in his dress. Very practical. He was an artist. Um, so in short, he rebels against current Victorian fashion, and he calls women for women to be free and um, free themselves against the extravagances of fashion. So artistic dress has been really very influential. This is a picture of the late, great David Bowie. You can really see the influence of artistic dress on him. And Oscar Wilde, looking fantastic. Um, artistic dress morphed into something that we now would call aesthetic dress. So this is a, just another really quick slide to, influence, to um, illustrate the influence of artistic dress now. So this is Florence from the very popular band Florence and the Machine. And you can really see the influence, I think, of the pre-Raphaelites on her. So the pre-Raphaelites were the artistic circle that Morris moved within. Um, she's very much harking back to, to a Renaissance style and definitely very, very influenced by those red-haired pre-Raphaelite muses. Okay, so there's been two quite distinct revivals of Morris within fashion, and I'm going to talk really briefly, I suppose, about, about the first one, which was in the 1960s. So Granny Takes a Trip was a boutique which was founded in London on the King's Road in Chelsea in 1966. 
it was actually on a very unfashionable part of the King's Road, but, but be, it became very fashionable after the shop became popular. What um, Granny Takes a Trip did was rework Victorian clothes, which in the 1960s would actually still be vintage, not antique. The founders had a really large collection of Victorian clothes. They would rework them into con more contemporary styles, and they also used those swirling psychedelic fabrics that we now kind of associate with the 1960s and 70s. Um, they, they, the shop was hugely influential, it was incredibly fashionable, and they really pitched London and sort of put London on the map as the kind of fashionable city in the swinging 60s. Um, there's George Harrison wearing a Granny Takes a Trip uh, jacket, which is also William Morris's Golden Lily pattern. And the, the image you can see below is a, a William Morris's chrysanthemum pattern on a Granny Takes a Trip jacket. So this is just how influential Granny Takes a Trip was. This is a stamp which is uh, celebrating British fashion, and it's taken the William Morris Golden Lily jacket. So I think it was one of six stamps that, that were produced. So they were hugely influential. These are some fantastic boots, again using chrysanthemum pattern. Okay, so now, contemporary Morris. One of our aims at the William Morris Gallery is to make William Morris meaningful to contemporary audiences. And I suppose my particular role, I'm always thinking about that because part of my role is to take Morris to market. So I approach brands that have some particular synergy with Morris and pitch that they might want to work with us using their beautiful images in our collection and very much try and, try and lead, them, lead them to use images that work with certain trends that are happening. So I do a lot of research into trends. I do a lot of research into, into what's happening in fashion. So really we invite brands to reimagine Morris. Why Morris? Why is Morris now popular again? So recent Morris exhibitions have made a lot of his political campaigning. For example, probably some of you saw the um, National Portrait Gallery exhibition, Beauty and Anarchy, and that looked at the legacy of William Morris. It really drew out that Morris was a rebel. He was a self-confessed rebel, um, but used really beautiful form, as Rowan said, Nature and beauty were very important to him, and I think that's probably a really appealing concept to the fashion industry, beauty and anarchy. Um, in times of austerity, Morris's designs are really comforting to us. I think we've all grown up with some of Morris in our home, so they are really very comforting. We're very sentimental about Morris. So also, in a time where minimalism has reigned in both fashion and particularly in interiors, Morris is, is not minimal. It's very um, busy, intricate, and as I said, really comforting. So, keep clicking and it doesn't... Okay. Um, so one of the first collaborations that I worked on at the gallery was with Jigsaw. Um, I was researching brands that used, um, well, that pitched themselves as British heritage brands. So I initially approached Jigsaw because they'd used a model which really looked like that long, red-haired, pre-Raphaelite muse. Um, and I pitched to them that they would like to do a William Morris collection, which they, they loved the idea. So... Really, they use three designs across a really small capsule collection, and we had excellent press coverage from that. I think people are, are very warm towards Morris. They're very kind of embracing of him. It's just another image from the Jigsaw collection. You can see that really we've taken... They didn't change his, his design, his pattern at all, they just put it onto very contemporary styles. And I think, as everybody said um, during the talks tonight, it's incredible that these designs are so, so old, but they can still look so incredibly contemporary. So the next um, collaboration that we did was with Mark by Mark Jacobs, and they had actually seen the Jigsaw collection, and so they contacted us. <laughs> 
they wanted, they had a particular idea about a kind of girl for this collection. So she was young, rebellious, um, she protested, and what they were thinking about was the suffragettes, protest imagery, but also beauty. So really, again, they called upon this idea that William Morris was a rebel. Um, he was very politically active as well. So this is how the acanthus design was used within the Mark by, Mark's ja Mark by Mark Jacobs collection. Um, we've worked with a lifestyle brand called the House of Hackney. House of Hackney are a young company and they've got two concessions in Liberties and Harrods and they have their own flagship store in Hackney. So I approached them because British design and um, quality of craftsmanship are extremely important to them. Um, they use really high quality um, materials and they specialise in affordable luxury. So I felt that they had quite a good synergy with Morris. The other reason I approached them is because they're very good at getting press and publicity, and that's always great to get press and publicity from Morris. So they harked back to the gran Granny Takes a drip, Trip Psychedelic Morris, and you can see this is an image from their collection. They came to the gallery and did a, a room set up actually within the gallery, and you can see that they've actually, this is actually this design here, Peacock and Dragon, um, except that they've changed the colours, made it very, very vivid, and then, as I said, quite psychedelic. This is um, another image from the gallery with uh, two House of Hackney models, and this pattern is Blackthorn, which is extremely delicate and beautiful. So they're looking, at the, their influences again are the 70s, and um, they're thinking about psychedelia as well. Okay, so the future. Morris has had a moment in fashion, um, but there's so many different ways to take our wonderful and large collection that we have. So one area that we've not really looked at is our beautiful embroidery collection, so that would be very exciting. I just want to leave you with a quote from Coco Chanel. So in times of, in, in hard times, um, I can't read my own handwriting. In hard, in hard times, um, we have an instinctive desire for authenticity. And I think that does sum up why Morris had, uh, had a recent moment. Um, he's so authentic, he's very British, beautiful and rebellious. Thank you.